Hi folks, this is Sammy from Enzyprem and you're watching MetalStorm.net. Now it's been five years since you guys were in Denver last. Yes. Welcome back, first of all. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Now, um, most people have not heard the songs from your last two albums live. Yep. Um, how many songs are going to be on the set list from both? Mm. <laughs> That's a good, good question because uh, at the moment we're missing most of our stuff, most of our gear still. Yeah. And, uh, and the last two albums we have these huge orchestrations and they are coming from Backtrack. Even though we have keyboard, but Emmy is kind of busy with all the other stuff, so we have some orchestrational elements coming from Backtrack. So if we're not getting those, then we're gonna do really vintage show with <laughs> probably with just the old material. The Enziferum unplugged? <laughs> Uh, not quite, but you know, something we play from the old, old uh, albums. I think there are like one or two songs we can do from the new albums without them sounding totally crappy. But of course we're optimistic that our stuff will get here. It's still like four hours to show, so... Uh, uh, yeah. Well, of course this is kind of promoting, still promoting the Unsung Heroes album, so there's gonna be... A few songs from that album and a few songs from Anza, uh, from from far. So, but we try to when we're making a set, we have like two principles. We try to check out if there's like possibility to check that what we played on the last tour, where we were in each city, and uh, also we like to play songs from each album. So also to keep, keep it interesting for hardcore fans who've seen us many times. So. Okay. Scene has exploded, especially in Europe, yep. uh, with the uh, uh, folk metal, pagan metal, Viking metal. Does it somehow lose the appeal? I don't care. <laughs> 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 well, well Enziferum is one of the oldest bands in this genre, and this is just uh, something that comes out of, from us really naturally. You know, uh, of course, it's nice that there's this hype going on, but. Uh, I think it's uh, inevitable that it will suffer the same fate as uh, like black metal and death metal and thrash metal. That it will be the hype and it will slow down a little bit and only the strongest will survive. <laughs> and because you just said uh, Enzoferm is one of the biggest bands. I said, I said oldest. Uh, oldest. Uh, let's be modest. Oh, okay, but <laughs> you are also one of the bigger bands coming out of Finland. But you only have five LPs? Mm -hmm. Do you go for quality over quantity? Quality, definitely. And we are really slow composers. Um, um, and we, there's no reason to change that because that's, again, something that, that's how we work. Um, it's, uh, there's no point changing, trying to change stuff that that would change the whole, the essence of Enzifero. It, it all started from Marcus vision from combining metal and folk music and he's a really precise person. And uh, we're all, we like to twist and turn all the chords and all the melodies and try to find the best solution. And uh, it takes time, but that way we can all stand behind each note of each song. So. And, and since you said it takes time, so I assume you do not write stuff down while you are on tour? You actually, wait till you are at home or how do you normally do this? Actually we write on tour. Uh, on this tour also we have had, we had two guitars and, uh, and we are currently working with the new material also. And, and actually on 2011 tour, uh, Marcus bought uh, Dulcimer, this uh, folk instrument from Oregon, and we were jamming in the back lounge, and he came up with this melody, and I was, you know, come up with a few chords, and that jamming session turned out to be Burning Leaves. Nice. Yeah, we still have the first recordings of that in some cell phone or something. Well, and Zendo too, I mean, uh, songs from Unsung Heroes, I guess you guys um, had them before, and they were on the back burner. Um, what made you guys refresh them now and put them out on Unsung Heroes? Like I said, uh, the song has to be ready. On, on 
Unsung Heroes there are at least two songs that we made the first demos back in uh, 2006 or something like that. But they were not ready. Not because they were not good, but they were not ready on the previous Not album. ready for that time of Ensephira? Yeah, or? Uh, for the albums, yeah, they were still missing some details. And, uh, we were not happy, and then we're not gonna release any shit. Like I said, we, we believe in quality. For quality, right. So, um, on a regular, how many songs or song structures do you have left over from an album that you will not release and maybe get back to later? That, that, that's a good question, and that's how we work, actually. We always have... Leftover is kind of bad word, because it sounds well, like yeah. it's like... <laughs> but there's always songs that are not ready. Like uh, from Unsung Heroes session, we had a few ideas, and now they're turning into new songs. And I'm sure that from this uh, period, from now until the next album, we're gonna have tons of ideas for the next album. Too, so uh, now, to be a successful musician or a successful band, one has to evolve. And with Unsung Heroes, you guys pushed the envelope and went totally in a different direction. Was that creative exploration or did that just turn out that way? I think things just like happened. We didn't think like, oh now we have to do something differently. I think each album can reflect a certain period of time in band's history. On a personal level, each member, and of course, as a band, as a family, in a way. And I think Unsung Heroes is a really good picture of the time that happened between From Afar and this time. And uh, well, the next album is going to be again something totally different because uh, now new winds are blowing in each each member's life and for our life as a band also. So. Right. We are really looking forward to, well, just before this tour we were still working with the new songs and everybody is really keen to go back to the rehearsal room and that's why we have guitars now, so we work in uh, bus also, so nice. we are really inspired. I, I really like that because even though we have like five al albums, but the band is pretty old, but we still have the sparkle, definitely, and we're and we have a lot of crazy ideas, you know, arranging an acoustic set and, you know, rearranging some old songs to... Uh, right. Two different versions. Oh, okay, anyway. Yeah, here, with uh, Passion Proof Power, I mean, that song is just <laughs> epic and there is so much going on within the song itself. Is that a mishmash of things to come for Ensiferum? I doubt. It, it was uh, just a song that... There was the, the melody from the beginning and uh, we started building it up. You know, that now the song should go a little, little bit to this direction. No, oh, yeah, that, that's, that's a good melody, let's change this and this a little bit. And suddenly we noticed, oh shit, it's over like eight minutes long and we're not in... Uh, everybody's feeling, no, we're not in a halfway. There's still so much to grow. More, right. And, um, and uh, one time me and Mahi, we were in rehearsal room and we were like, okay, we need some dynamics for the song because there's already been so much crazy stuff going on and, and um, we had this idea of uh, like medieval market square That thing. market scene, yes. Yeah, we yeah. had that idea for years, maybe have it as an intro between songs or something. And uh, we were in rehearsal room, like, oh, let's, let's try that one. And uh, we came up with the, the melody and uh, like the raw version of that, then we're thinking, yeah, you Something know, is missing. the idea for, yeah, here be like noises from the market is still missing something, and maybe there should be like a dialogue or something. Yeah, two guys going to like Twilight Tavern or something, and we started, you know, laughing. No, that's not crazy enough, you know, it has to be in German. <laughs> Just for some reason. Well, of course, you know, German yeah. fans are really special to us because it's like our second home in a way. It's a really big fan base there. And um, yeah, then we send an email to our uh, management, German management, that okay, we're not drunk or you know, anything. <laughs> <laughs> we have this idea, we need three German actors. And they were like, okay, we're listening. And <laughs> then I explained the thing and sent them an English demo of this. Thing and they said, okay, let's see what we can do. And, uh, 
next day, our manager comes up back to us. Like, okay, maybe we should ask from another band because they are usually up to you know crazy stuff. You know, actors might not get to the point right. easily. And uh, they introduced us to the Alkalitische Weiter guys. And, uh, so you met them before they did the dialogue? No, no, we changed some emails yeah. and there was such, such nice guys. We met them actually on the cruise. On the, the cruise? I was just gonna ask you about this. Yeah, yeah, it was so nice, uh, like, first encounter. We, we knew, <laughs> knew their set is gonna start, like, in 10 minutes. And me and Mahi go there and buy you know, buckets of beer and go there. Hi, nice to finally meet you guys. And here's some beer, have a good yeah. show. <laughs> and, and they were a really good live band. That was really the first yeah. time I saw them live. And we've been in the same festivals in Europe many times, but I never saw them live. Yeah. They were a really good live band. And uh, I really hope we can do something together, like some tour or something. Else. That would be really something. Um, your video, In My Sword I Trust. Yes. Uh, Gruppe 13, I mean, I love their stuff. Yes. So many bands have done. Uh, uh, I think uh, Behemoth was the one that actually brought them yeah. into the market and yeah. more and more. Uh, El Beatty just did their last video with them. Mm -hmm. And the Creator. Yeah, and Creator, that, yes. That really creator too. Also. Um, how did you guys hear about them? Why did you decide on them? Again, uh, the big thanks to go to our management. Who is your management? Continental. Uh, well, they, they were just giving us some options and then they said, okay, this is really good. They did a really good job for many bands and we check out their work and we're like, wow, oh, okay. Do we have a budget for this? Because we're still a small band and, uh, and uh, our management said, yeah, yeah, we can work something out. And uh, we decided the song. It was kind of obvious choice from the album. And, uh, and I just emails with the director a few times and uh, I said I had some ideas because I wrote the lyrics and I kind of had an idea in my head. He said yeah please send them. And he was a really nice guy and uh, I sent him a like, raw idea and he liked most of the ideas and then I just told him that yeah this is the ideas from the bass player now do it as a director or a scriptwriter would do. The same thing I do actually with music when I'm when I come with an idea of a new song or a melody or something I usually just it's like really raw, you know, a bass player and you know, guitar plays like this and bass player is like this, if you get the idea. Uh, I usually give the riff to Marcus and said, okay, play like a guitar player would do. So, same happened here and the director liked the ideas and I think the video turned out to be really good. Very good. And it was, I usually don't like making videos, I think it's really boring and <laughs> like when we were shooting Ahti, I had terrible hangover, I puked between the... <laughs> when we were shooting it and uh, I think there's like two seconds that we're actually seeing in the whole fucking video. We're lying as a body on the ground. <laughs> Nobody can recognize us and it took like a whole day. Yeah. We were there, you know, it's cold and wet and I had a terrible hangover. And, <laughs> and anyway, I, I really don't like making music, music videos, but this was totally this was exceptional. Yeah. I really like this session. Yeah. Here are some odds and ends questions. Black stripe on your guys' face. Is there a history about this? I think Marcus could answer this one. I think it's a really old tradition. Old tradition of Enciferum? Yes, or? yeah, Enciferum. And uh, it's part of the ritual before the show. And uh, you know, everybody has their own ways to warm up and um, get ready for the show. And that's something that unites us and it's nice. like what well, we we'll, we'll do pretty much just before we come on stage and it's something really collective uh, thing. It's, the last track on your last three albums is getting longer and longer. <laughs> Are you gonna try to break Manowar's record on Triumph of Steel? No, let them keep the record. For them. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's not intentional. And, uh, actually, I can't say for 100%, but I think for the next album there's not gonna be any that long songs. As far as uh, the material for now, we have like... Uh, How many eight. songs have you got already for the new one? I think we have ideas for all the songs. I think it's like maybe 10, 12 raw songs now. 
maybe eight to ten are gonna be on the album plus intro. So nice. Now in May you're gonna go first time ever to uh, South America. How stoked are you about this one? And why did it take so long to bring Ensiferum to South America? Money. Hey. Not, not for us, you know. It's, it's a place like that. It's not for money for us, but it's so expensive. Finland is so fucking far away. Even coming to States is pain in the ass. With the visas. With and visas are terribly expensive nowadays. Overweight and we have our own crew and. Uh, Right. So it's always been about um, expensive flights or so that um, the offers come in the period that we already have something else. Right. But it's really cool finally to get there because it's the last continent where we haven't been. Well, of course, Antarctica, but I doubt we're ever gonna play there. <laughs> Uh, It'll be cool, but let's see. So what's next for Antiferum after Pagan Fest and South America? Uh, well, summer festivals and... Um, Do you know already which ones you're gonna be on? Uh, uh, there are some announced, announced already. They're on our official website and some are still to be announced. And um, Are you guys gonna play Bloodstock? Maybe. <laughs> that's the one that's not been announced though. <laughs> Let's see, actually, I don't even remember all of them. Shame on me, I'm just a bass player. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, we have some special plans for autumn, but in uh, the meantime, we're all trying to work with the new songs as much as possible. And uh, I think the, the plan is to try to hit the studio like a year from now. Because we still have some touring to do. On song, it only came out in August. So. Yeah, and yeah. Um, we, this time we like to do demos, probably maybe even like two demos, and um, and do like really good pre-production. We had really good pre-production for this album, but uh, we can do stuff much more better. Okay. That's that's the beauty of uh, making new album because you learn every time from the session that okay, next time we do this better and. Uh, so next time we'll be again wiser with many things. So yeah, I think the goal is to hit the studio here from now. Last words are to your fans. Uh, if you still haven't heard the new album, check it out. And um, hope to see you on this tour and uh, stay. It's out!